Cities in the developing world have the capacity to be engines of opportunity that transform poverty into prosperity. But too often, they are bedeviled by spatial planning that, that just doesn't work, that creates pockets of, of poverty that are isolated from the economic engine of, of the city. The goal of effective city making is to make sure that we ramp up the good aspects of cities, the positive spillovers that occur when people are close to one another, when they work, work together, when they learn from one another, and to try and ameliorate the downsides of urban density, the traffic congestion, the contagious disease, and the crime that can often make cities less than desirable. When we think about the, the spatial development of the West, we're used to imagining cities that were anchored by rental developments that were higher density, close to the city center, where people paid property taxes, ownership was affordable, and the avenues of development were often tied down by public transportation. When we think about densification in poor world cities, we often think about infill development at low densities, sometimes even crowding over into city streets, rarely formal, rarely with title, rarely paying taxes, and often anchored by no form of viable public transportation, but instead transportation is provided by minibuses that provide mobility in crowded and slow-moving conditions. We can talk about obstacles in terms of policy terms. We can talk about the difficulty of actually getting formal titling. We can talk about the difficulty of, of actually providing public transportation, of, of the need for technical solutions. But in some sense, the greatest lack is always public capacity is the fact that we are looking at governments that have a dearth of material resources that are often hamstrung by higher levels of government that make it difficult for cities to act, that have very few revenues that they can actually take advantage of, um, and that are facing problems that are momentous, getting worse every year because of the flow of people into these areas, and, and are often the very challenge is made more severe if the government succeeds, because if a city government makes its city more habitable, more prosperous, it will then attract a flood of new migrants. The, the right response to that is not to say no to the migrants, there is no future in rural poverty, but uh, to try and figure out how to make these cities more livable, and that requires public capacity. I see three main research avenues that are needed. The first is a well-traveled road involving more and more sophisticated spatial models that enable cities to understand what different interventions, be it housing upgrading or a public transportation system, will do to the overall shape of the city. The second type of research agenda, technology, big data measuring cities and understanding what new technologies bring, be it housing technologies, plastics, stackable modular housing, transportation technology, electric buses, right? improvements in the minivan system, can we think about areas in which more safety occurs or better coordination of these buses. All of these are about technology. The third line of research is a more general holistic attempt to understand how institutions shape urban form, to understand the nexus of rights that we typically associate with property ownership in the West, to understand how various forms of, of ownership structures work best for providing public services. The right answer is not an ideological attempt to say everything should always be done by the private sector or everything should be always be done by the public sector. In some cases, the right answer is almost assuredly direct public provision. In some cases, the private sector can deliver the services that people need. We need to understand which institutions work correctly in which settings. Thank you.